First, I want to start by saying, Kal Alal Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Raka Akodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of James Graham Stone and salutation to you, Akim, out there pushing this truth in sincerity. Uh, Shalom, this is a brother Kanan from James Jamaica. And um, this lesson uh, will be to the, um, centered around the old famine and unrest, basically. Right? And it's more direct um, in the Jamaican perspective, but this is going to be a, a worldwide event. No? But we've been out there prophesying and warning the people the, um, week in, week out. We're set up as prophets to do that. But two thirds of our people, even Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, which are the true biblical Israelites according to the Bible, um, fail to believe or accept this fact. You know, I mean that we are the prophets set up by Yahweh Bashem Yahushai to really warn them of the coming time. So our words basically fall on deaf ears. Now, as I said, we spoke about um, famine. Or we've been teaching about famine, um, pestilence, um, martial law, um, also World War III, and the mark of the beast, and other topics. You know what I mean? Right, which farming is gonna basically all these working in, in one, everything work together as one. It's coming it's, all these um, activities gonna basically bring the destruction of the society and ushering the new kingdom which is the kingdom of heaven. Right? Now what tell people say farming how come? It seems far fetched for a person to actually believe that a farming can actually take place in a society like this today, which it is much easier for a famine to take place in society today than back then. And the reason, my reason for saying that is basically, especially for countries like Jamaica, we highly depend on, um, we depend on other countries to supply us with our food. And I mean, you talk about Jamaicans, you are the Benjamites, right? It's so simple. Just like with them lock the ports and people can't travel back and forth, so simple for the ports them get locked where food and other essential um, needs stop coming to the country. So that means say yo the country itself, as the best basically, can't supply itself like one time. You know what I mean? Because ninety percent of Jamaican are the food that Jamaicans eat, so called Jamaicans, Benjamites eat, don't come from the land of Jamaica. All right. Now, I would say we've been saying this, right? People look at our stories as rubbish. Now, this is um, a minister, right, in Jamaica Parliament. Basically, um, you take him for trying the streets. Whether he might do this for politically gain or not, I care zero. All right. The fact, same as same as say is important to me because I know that this is factual and it's gonna happen in a short time period. You know what I mean? Now let me just get an article and then get some scriptures. Alright, so this is Paul Wally says COVID hunger pangs may spark unrest. Now COVID nineteen coronavirus the Masayo basically within this time period that the persons would have been sent home to basically stop the spreading of this virus because basically you have to intermingle with people basically if it, has, if it spread. So basically them first our objective was to basically keep people from moving and entering to public spaces. So them say like Honorable Brother God said, Mr. Mr. Prime Minister, Tana Yayad. Right? That are them whole idea to basically um, prevent this. Now, in doing that, basically the country is on a lockdown in our sense. Not only the country, the entire world is on a lockdown at this time. So a lot of people would have been um, out of jobs, being at home, you know, not fending for themselves because their main supply of, of food and um, utilities or them pay them bills would have come from them working. You know what I mean? So when they send them home, obviously after that time period, of being home, not earning any income, your bills them all pile up, you have a strata of food. So obviously, some point along the way, people would have 
become hungry and a hungry man is a hungry man as so called Jamaicans always say. You know what I mean? Now we always say it takes hunger for break people for you see the true animalistic side of people and bring people hungry for people you know. They just want to eat, you know what I mean? Now I'm just going to the article some more. It says, painting a worrying picture of many Jamaicans struggling to stave off the pangs of hunger from the COVID-19 economic fallout, opposition lawmaker Philip Palwell is urging the government to double the 10.6 billion aid package. No, even if you say, oh, by doubling that, no, them can basically, you know, keep off things for some time period. But how long can this um, package, or how, how much this um, package can do? Well, let's move on. It says, Powell urged, pa sorry, Powell argued that the contingency fund was woeful inadequate, right? Financial Secretary Darlene Morrison said Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark will respond to the emerging concerns when he addresses Parliament next Tuesday. Paul was shared with his parliamentary colleagues yesterday that he went into his constitu to, sorry, constituency recently to provide care packages to the elderly and shut-ins but had a rude awakening. He had a rude awakening. He revealed that the demand for packages was about 2,500 more. Ah, sorry. The demand for packages was about 2,500 more than three times the 700 he distributed. All right. The experience of going out there reveals to me that it is not only our elderly who are in dire straits. We have a large mass of people who are growing in hunger. Now, I'm not going to do all of this, right? Alright, so we're not going to go into all of this. The, the whole idea is, right, we've been teaching about this for some time. Nobody believes or wants to listen. Only the elect, which only the elect going to believe. You know what I mean? But now these ministers were supposed to have vision, were supposed to lead people, you know, couldn't see ABC steps to say, okay, if you send one people, well now and them now work, them now have an income. Remember, the most Jamaicans live day to day. Also, you know what I mean? Work to feed themselves for the day. You work for go back to work. Sometimes you have work and the work where you work can't take you back to work. Um, the people that get can't take you back to work every time. Right? It are, like you might can't care for the for, for, for 20 days. The rest of the day, them, you, have to, you, have to, you, have to, you have to tough it out. You know what I mean? This is the reality of a lot of Jamaicans. And you, these ministers never think of them and say, oh, look here, when you send them these people, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? For sure, yeah, that them blind, which is going, I'm going to get a scripture there also. But let me just grab a few scriptures. It says it's um, Jeremiah um, 14 and verse, I must go straight to the point, verse 15. It said, Therefore, thus said the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, right? Who is a prophet? A person that say, um, say something before it am. So whether you yeah, so false information or true, once you speak in future tense, you are a prophet. It's just if you are a false prophet or a true prophet. That's just the difference. All right? It says, in my name, and I sent them not, yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom the prophets, sorry, Right, say so by sword and by famine shall those prophets be consumed. Right, so everybody when not believe, say yo, famine will come, famine will kill you here. All right, verse 16 and the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem, right, because of the famine and by this and by the sword. Now you're going to say, Oh, this is said in Jerusalem. Guess what? You have a rude awakening, just like Mr. Powell. When you see. Wherever um, you people dwelling, getting um, dying for hunger and famine, because one, Israelites, um, basically you are the city of peace. 
You know what I mean? Yara Shalom. You are the city of peace. Now, um, and the people met the city, not the city met the people. Anyways, next, let's get to the next precept. All right? So these leaders you trust in and believe for them are guide you. These dumb dogs that cannot bark. Now I have no vision, right? Never see say yo in doing either them never see it or them are basically plan up for this trial, you know. Either way, it's gonna lead to an end, a terrible end for you people. Now verse Matthew 15. Let's shut this first. Matthew 15 and verse verse 14. It says, It said, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. Alright? So, we see the famine which all you people heading for. You know what I mean? Now, this is what we've been saying, which the Bible been saying. We just speak the Bible, the most high word. This is 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw it nigh. And you can see that there's really a war right now taking place in the world. The entire earth basically in a turmoil and distress at this time. You know what I mean? All right, let's continue. And one, it says, For the sword and their destruction draw it nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another. We hear them come up with the answer. Um, right now, they are plan to basically lock, lock down ghettos mainly, or for mainly penetrate um, in the, doing tests on people in the ghetto, you know, quarantine people in the ghettos because why? They must say the ghetto basically more vulnerable and the spreading of this so called coronavirus disease really take place in them area, um, areas. You know what I mean? So, I'm going to target you people, which who are the persons living in ghettos? You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you populate the ghettos more than any other um, um, nation or people. You know and I mean, as the Bible says, you are the least of the earth. You know and I mean, right now, um, basically, um, we're, the, we're basically not the least state at this time. We really are the greatest person, our people upon the earth, but we're not the least, we're at the bottom of the, of the barrel right now. You know what I mean? Because we disobey the Lord um, commandments, or never take heed. Right, let me just continue in this. All right. It says, And one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands, for there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city, like now, you know what I mean? Mr. Brogad said, Tana Yayad. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Why? Martial law. You're going to have the streets locked down with soldiers and police. Meaning, you're going to have checkpoints where you can't go into these cities because they're on lockdown. Right? For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. Let me just go up a little further before that. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Right? Why you have invasion in a people's house? Right, you gotta get into that. It says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Now, this we tell in a long time, say, oh, this is this Bible, this preaching thing is not a joke thing. We're literally warning people of, the, of their near future, and majority did not take in it. But broad is the way to what? Destruction, and narrow is the way to life. And a few people are going to find the way to life. You know what I mean? Let me just get the next precept. These precepts are pretty straightforward and to the point. You know what I mean? And we've been seeing. Um, People really feeling the effect already, and I mean, we don't expect it. But it I go, it I go maximize, I get, it I get, it I go reach a higher level. The fire go get, I go turn up. And I mean, you have females, but them really gonna feel it the most. You have females that basically two, three kids, and 
them they done their struggle already to maintain. You know, they have to leave um, because school closed. You know what I mean? They have to leave them work, go home, stay home with these kids because there's nobody to basically look out for these kids. You know? So them, they have home, not have a job. Some of them never they have a job from day one. You know what I mean? So now them, they have home, they have a job who find food for them and them, and them kids. You know what I mean? That's just the, the situation at this time. All right, let me just read this. All right, so this is Isaiah 32. Um, let will start from verse 9. It says, Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall you be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease, be troubled, you careless ones, strip you and make you bear and gird sackcloth upon your lines. Alright? So the vintage is what? The food. You know what I mean? Your money, the gathering now come. Alright? Because there won't be any work or any food coming your way. You know what I mean? And this is going to be a scholarly to the hour of temptation where people are going to be forced to take the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip. You know what I mean? Just like I'm going to push towards the um, idea to get vaccine right now. You soon hear if you don't get vaccine, you can't go back to work. Or, um, which, and if you don't get vaccine, the vaccine be, could all have the chip. Or you have to get the chip for the mark, so you know, you've been vaccine, uh, vaccinated already. So, it's just playing out in the way it should, according to the Bible. And all who don't believe in the Bible, you're going to get damned. And I mean, that's just the truth. So, never want to make it long, so I'm just going to wrap up anyways. Alright, so, everybody going to feel this. Everybody will feel it. You know what I mean? But when you get the, the fire get hotter, some people going to get burned. Some people going to turn gold. You know what I mean? The elect going to turn gold. Some people going to just burn. So with that I want to say Kalalal Yahawa Bashem Yahushai Bashem Raka Kodash and double honors again to the apostles and elders of James Kremlestone and to you Akimot, they are pushing this truth in sincerity. Keep doing so. Shalom.